Slow living is all about prioritizing the things that matter the most to you and taking the time to savor life's simple pleasures. But even those who are familiar with the concept, like me, can still fall into the common traps when trying to slow down. In this video, I'm going to share some of the mistakes that I made when I was starting out on my own slow living journey and some of the things that I still today find quite challenging. Slow living means that everything needs to be slow. And this was one of the first things that I actually thought, that if I start this lifestyle, it's like becoming a monk, basically. There's no more Netflix series, no more video games, no more going out. It's just that home in this continuous zen state, sniffing my plants or whatever. That's what I really thought this lifestyle is about. Like it's a huge commitment. And then later on, I realized I read about it more, watched some videos and then implemented it into my own life and realized it's so much more than just that. Or maybe I could even say it's so much less than that. In slow living, it's okay to do a lot of things. That's fine. You just need to remember the relaxation part, the self-care. I think is good example, the busy versus productive. It's important to not just be busy all the time. You can be productive, but productivity means also relaxation. And a good thing to add here is that it's not just about productivity that you all the time constantly need to be thinking what you should do next. What's the wisest thing that you need to do now? In slow living, you don't overthink about those things so much. You do what you feel to do and what you need to get done but you don't worry about all the things that need to get done all the time and it's okay to do things fast you should do fast things if you love those like for me i i love running fast and then i run fast i don't all of them have to run slowly there are not really like things that you can do and things that you absolutely cannot do you can still use technology it's fine you just need to use it in a smart way to remember the balance you don't for example watch some crazy harry potter marathon so i don't know how many movies there are like eight or nine movies in a row in one day have some sort of balance in those this is one of the reasons why i don't personally watch a Netflix series because I get so into those that I really lose my life control so it's much easier to not even start those balancing that screen time with something else like going out in the nature being with friends playing board games instead of video games filling up every moment with the stimuli this is one of those things that in today's life and this modern era, it's so hard to be without any sort of distraction or something going in your mind. Like for example, one of my worst enemies are YouTube Shorts. Luckily, I was smart enough to not even start with TikTok because I think that's one of the worst things. But still, YouTube Shorts and TikTok are pretty similar. The videos are so short and you can skip through them so easily that it just hit that dopamine peak there and stay there all the time. I find myself so many times just, I don't want to say mindlessly scrolling because many times I decide myself to go to YouTube platform and start watching those, but at least that it's so hard to stop once you get started. But it's important to understand that for our own mental health, it's crucial. It's really essential that we are not all the time stimulated by something because our brains, they need that time to recover as well. And you know the feeling when you have scrolled something, your phone, for example, two hours in a row, you don't feel too good after that. You feel so overstimulated and overwhelmed. And I still get that at times. And in those moments, it feels like just allowing yourself to be and not do anything is like the worst thing ever. It feels so hard kind of to embrace that boredom and put that phone away or TV away, away or something, but it's exactly what you need to do. We really need to start normalizing boredom again because it's those type of moments when you can self-reflect on a lot of things and get those creative ideas. At least I have noticed when my mind is not occupied on some task or that I need to do something, I can really think deeply and come up with good ideas and understand what I should do with my life basically. And even though I don't know if this is a very common mistake, for me this has been the biggest one, clearly. I'm having hard time to find the balance with the technology and just being. To always know the right moment when to put it away and when to use it, that's where I need to like really try to improve still a lot. Comparing yourself with others or doing something just because you are supposed to. Slow living, like many different types of lifestyles, are personal journeys for everybody. This means that even though you would embrace this type of lifestyle as other people do, 
your lives don't need to look the same. You can still have different passions, interests, hobbies and different boundaries, different ways to live. There's not really right way to live slowly or be, for example, a minimalist. Like many people have said in my minimalist videos that you are not a real minimalist because you should have a smaller apartment and less stuff and whatever. But there's not just one right way to do it. And I feel like especially with slow living, this type of comparison thing is exactly what it's kind of against. So thinking that you should exactly live in a certain way and, and another way not. Because we are all unique. So what might be good for you might not be for me. Or I could, for example, as I do work with my computer eight hours a day, but somebody who is not used to that at all, two hours screen time per day for them might be impossible. We are unique and we all have our have different values and priorities. And it's important that we live aligned with those and not what is important for somebody else. And that is exactly why in slow living, one mistake could be that you don't realize first what are your priorities, what are your values, but you just kind of follow what other people are doing. Or in minimalism, you cannot own, for example, a TV. If it brings you value, why not? And it's completely fine if you are not on the same level as other people are. We are all in different stages in our own journey. This lifestyle is not about finding that certain level of success or perfection. It's about finding contentment and joy in today. My own slow living journey has been full of incredible lessons and benefits. If you want to know the most surprising ones, make sure to watch this video next. Remember to stay kind and meaningful in your own beautiful journey. See you in the next one.